Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and welcome to Derm TV. Today's Derm TV episode is about psoriasis, a common problem, but a subject that in almost 400 episodes of Derm TV we haven't covered. I'm, I'm just thrilled and honored today to have as a guest my colleague and friend, Dr. Mark Lebwall. Um, Dr. Mark Lebwall is the chairman and uh, professor of dermatology at the Mount Sinai Hospital and the Mount Sinai Medical Center here in New York. Uh, he is an esteemed worldwide known authority on psoriasis, as a matter of fact, in dermatology's most prestigious journal, The Archives of Dermatology. Dr. Lebwall was a co-author of the recent article on the guidelines for the management and treatment of psoriasis. And um, we're going to have a good time. We're going to find out a lot of good things about psoriasis today. So Dr. Lebwall, welcome. Thank you very much Thank for coming and, and spending this time with us. My pleasure. You, you didn't say that I was a medical resident going to be a cardiologist at Mount Sinai, and you were my teacher in dermatology, and that's certainly one of the reasons I went into dermatology. Um, very kind uh, of Dr. Lebwall to mention that. Um, at Mount Sinai Hospital, he's my boss in dermatology. Uh, he has an encyclopedic knowledge of dermatology and internal medicine, and there's a reason that he's respected uh, the way he is in, in our profession. Thank you. So, Mark, tell me, what is psoriasis? Um, psoriasis is an inherited disease of not just the skin, but also the immune system, the joints, and what we're learning recently is even the cardiovascular system. Uh, it has uh, heart, heart effects. Uh, for example, patients with severe psoriasis are more prone to get heart attacks than other people. Um, it, uh, uh, is, its most common manifestation is in the skin, and it looks like red, scaly lesions we call plaques that occur on the elbows, knees, scalp, but they can evolve the whole surface of the body. The cells of the skin in this disease multiply too quickly. Now, ordinarily, your skin makes itself over every 28 days, approximately 28 to 30 days, and you don't even see the cells of the skin falling off because they're falling off in such small amounts. In psoriasis, the cells of the skin multiply very quickly, and the skin makes itself over every two to four days, and you literally can't, the cells don't have time to separate from each other, so you see these large white scales coming up on the elbows, knees, and wherever you have psoriasis. Um, so that is what it is. Do, do, do a lot of people have psoriasis? Is, is it common? It's fairly common. Uh, the estimates are done by surveys that have uh, taken place over the years. And in the United States, for example, 2.6% uh, or 7 million Americans have psoriasis. Wow, uh, that, that, that's a lot of people. Of, of that 7 million, what part are mild psoriasis that, that people can treat at home, and what part are severe that they need to see doctors for? Well, um, very mild is perhaps uh, a small percent, 10 or 20 percent. I would say mild enough to treat with topical therapies, which include prescription topical therapies, is about three quarters of three psoriasis quarters. patients. Okay, so most people do not have severe psoriasis. Right. Can, can you tell me what is the type of psoriasis that people have that they can take care of at home without seeing a doctor, and what's available to them to treat it? Sure. So the most common type is called plaque psoriasis, and often patients will have a little rough, dry skin on the elbows or knees, uh, maybe in the scalp, and they'll often mistake it for dandruff. Uh, but you can actually see thick red scales in the, in the scalp, and that tells you that it's psoriasis, not dandruff. Uh, the, uh, and you can use over-the-counter shampoos. There are tar shampoos, uh, shampoos that contain something called salicylic acid that work well in the scalp. Uh, on the elbows and knees, you can use over-the-counter cortisones. There are also over-the-counter tar preparations, which are a little messy, but uh, do work well for psoriasis. And even just moisturizers work fairly well for psoriasis. And of course, the most common and very effective uh, treatment is sunlight. Sun exposure does benefit psoriasis quite a bit. It's unusual to have a dermatologist <laughs> telling you to, to go out in the sun, but, but we do tell our psoriasis patients to do that. Um, anything in the diet that's either good for psoriasis or things that should be avoided? So every time it's been looked at, we have not been able to find a food that makes it either better or worse. 
uh, and it has been looked at and studied a lot. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, it was thought a number of years back uh, based on a letter to a newspaper from a patient who ingested turmeric, a spice, and said his psoriasis cleared. And so someone actually went and did the study. It was a double-blind study. Half the patients got turmeric, half the patients got a fake, and it didn't do anything. Uh, oh. So th there's no food I can tell you to av avoid. Alcohol? Uh, Any effect of alcohol? So, you know, alcohol binges um, certainly appear to worsen psoriasis. Uh, and the question that's always been raised, is it the psoriasis that causes you to drink, or is it the <laughs> drink that causes you to have psoriasis? And the answer to that is not clear. So if somebody's psoriasis is not controlled by the things you just told us that are readily available, when is it time to see a doctor to treat psoriasis? Right. So once you have to use cortisones, that even over-the-counter ones, and on, you're using them on a regular basis, weeks in a row, or you're just not getting far enough with over-the-counter things, that's when you should be seeing a dermatologist. And, and I will say, I, I think that most um, internists can manage uh, mild psoriasis about as well as a patient can at home. But once it gets to the point where, where topical, weak topical cortisones aren't working, you probably need to see a dermatologist. Mark, just give us one insight into the history of psoriasis. Um, well, psoriasis certainly goes back thousands of years. It was officially first described in, in the 19th century. Uh, but if you look at old biblical descriptions of leprosy, it's pretty clear that many of those patients did not have leprosy. You know, they suddenly, uh, you know, leave um, the, the, the mainstream, go and bathe in a, a bath, and suddenly uh, here they are in, in uh, salt water and sun, and their leprosy goes away, and probably that was psoriasis. So apparently an awful lot of people who were thought to be lepers in antiquity actually had psoriasis. That's Some right. good news. Mark, Thank you so much for coming today. Mark Lebwell, Chairman, Professor of Dermatology, Mount Sinai Hospital. Thank you again. My pleasure. Please join me again at DermTV.com. If you have a question, please send it to me by visiting DermTV.com slash question. I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and thank you for watching today.